Hello and welcome to another Magic of Fishing video on a very hot Sunday afternoon in September. It's red hot, the sun's gone in a bit now but it's, uh, it's nearly 30 degrees, very unusual for this time of year. I'm going to try and get out fishing for a couple of hours to a local club water. Um, if you've seen a couple of recent videos you'll see there's one that I've uh, used to recreate my granddad's secret paste recipe from many years ago so look out for the link below for that if you've not seen it. Uh, and also a link to a video about what was in his tackle box or what still is in his tackle box and how little gear uh, he and others needed to go fishing all those years ago. I also show you around my own uh, tackle bag and box and talk about the way I've tried to uh, minimise the amount of gear that I take around with me, certainly when I'm down at home in Woking. Um, keep m much of my match gear up in Sheffield with my dad because that's where I fish my matches. But today I'm going to try and take some of that secret bread paste and show you that it still works, can still catch fish um, before I need to be back for the afternoon to uh, spend more time with my family and then return to work tomorrow morning. In the second half of the book I talk about how I've uh, taken this minimalist approach to my fishing as life's got busier and uh, that still allows me to get out on the bank quite regularly. Two or three minutes to load the car. I've grabbed a landing net off the wall, the tackle bag that I uh, walked you through in the previous video, I've got a light folding chair and this uh, small quiver rod bag which has my bank sticks, landing net handle and of course rods in. So yeah other than that I really have just grabbed a bottle of water and the paste that I made out of the fridge that's been waiting there a couple of days and it's as simple as that it's taken me five ten minutes to get out of the house obviously the warm weather helps I don't need to get my waders and wet weather gear on but um, yeah it's a 15 minute drive to the to the club pond and we'll hopefully prove that my granddad's bread paste still has uh, a bit of magic in it. And here we are at one of my local club waters, only a small pool of a couple of acres or so. There's a fish jumping. And it's important to point out I've not come to a commercial fishery, a classic commercial fishery, stock full of uh, carp because I think you can put anything pretty much on the hook, the right one of those venues and catch fish. And uh, just to show you that my granddad's pace still works for um, pretty much lots of different species. I thought it'd be a bit fairer to come to a more traditional pool where there's some roach and a few tension crusions. Conditions couldn't be worse really because it's been so hot and dry for a week or so now. You can see there's quite a lot of scum on the on the surface but it's a lovely pond with some willows and lilies. And just like it didn't take me long to fill the boot shouldn't take me too long to get the stuff out and get to uh, find an ice peg. Okay that's the car locked. Let's walk down this little peninsula that runs between uh, a bit of a bigger lake. Plenty of carp in there, bigger boys and this little pool here and find somewhere to uh, to sit. And then I've chosen quite one of the early early pegs that's uh, not far from the car because I haven't got long as I keep reminding you and uh, I like the look of those lilies there so it's very low the water a bit scummy but hopefully we'll uh, tempt at least a small roach or something off the end of there and in a second I'll show you the very simple old-fashioned rig and uh, tackle and uh, tactics that I'm using including my granddad's old reel but first of all I've remembered the paste, thank God, because it would have been a bit awkward if I left it in the fridge. It's gone a bit sort of uh, doughy and bread-like on the outside. Get rid of this paper. A bit tough where it's dried out in the fridge, but if you split it open, it's like pizza dough, really stretchy and uh, perfect for making tiny little balls that'll stay on the hook for, for long enough to interest the fish, but soft enough to strike through on the uh, if you do get a bite. So I've got my pace, now let me show you how I'll be fishing it. So first, uh, rod and reel. I'm mixing old and new with my granddad's original centre pin. Not an expensive uh, collector's item, but a, a reliable aluminium or maybe steel reel that he used for many years with this old Bakelite handles. And I've put some 
four pound Maxima line on there, not a lot because I'm fishing close by. Um, and four pound may sound fairly light for fishing near those lilies with the chance of a tench, outside chance of a tench or crucian. Um, but most of you will know that Maxima is as tough as old rope and I believe in balance gear so pairing that with an acolyte, Drennan acolyte rod which uh, if you've ever had the pleasure of using one is one of the lightest uh, and loveliest rods I've ever fished with. I've got them at several lengths. This is a 15 foot one which I'd usually use on the river for bolo or uh, stick float fishing but the others were already set up with other rigs and reels. So. Now hopefully you can pick this up but it's a very fine wire model hook, size 14, Drennan, I think it's a silverfish pattern but very fine wire, it's barbless and 14 may sound fairly big but there's, there's going to be paste masking at least part of the hook so I want something for that paste to be able to cling on to and still have a bit of the, the point exposed and that is tied to a three pound bottom of a few inches just attached loop to loop. And then there's the first telltale shot there, the number eight stops. We go a bit further up the line by a foot or so, and we have further two number eight stops. And then we're up to the float, which is held in place with a couple of locking shot. And as you can see, it's one of my granddad's original porcupine quill floats. It's caught a few fish in its time and had a bit of a battering, but. Uh, I'm sure it'll show me one or two good bites today, even if the fish aren't feeding hard. And uh, it'll be very pleasurable to see that going under. Now I've uh, plumbed up, it's about four foot deep by those, uh, those pads, which is a nice depth for paste fishing. And uh, I'll just show you what the bait looks like on the hook. I've just taken a tiny bit out from the, uh, the centre of the ball. And, uh, it's a bit of a tricky job, but it's a bit like folding a bread flake, a piece of bread flake onto the hook, and you're just pinching it on and leaving it a bit rough around the edges like that. And that way the hook will pull through easily. It's not a standardised shape like a pellet, and uh, the fish should find that really attractive once they get the, the scent of the vanilla and the taste of the honey wafting towards them. We'll see in a second. So we're ready for the first cast of the day and uh, whether you're pole fishing uh, or using a rod and line like me, as long as you're fishing within easy reach you can go for an under underarm flick just to land the, uh, the bait in the rig close to the lilies. If you're using a centre pin reel like this you really just need to pull a bit of a loop of line off the reel through two of the rod rings and that will give you a bit of casting length and but it really is an underarm flick and I don't think many of you are watching for casting tips anyway but um, now we're fishing and let's see how we get on. I managed to land the float right next to the lilies, cock nicely, I've already got a dip, probably a small fish, a bit of rain just started coming down which is uh, quite nice actually in this temperature and might help the fishing. Another little indication there it just shows that this old bread paste is, uh, can appeal instantly, not, not just a, a slow bait for, for sitting it out. And feeding wise, this is really the only bait I have with me, so it's going to be a case of match the hatch, and that really just means feeding what you've got on the hook or using on the hook what you're feeding. And in this case, you do need to fish quite close in, it's not something that catapults out easily, but you're taking just tiny little balls of the paste, rolling it around until you've got a little a bit smaller than a pea, but a little ball of it, and then you can flick it out. And because there's not a lot of bait going in, I tend to do that all the time. As, as long as you're not playing a fish or striking it a bite, you just keep rolling those little balls of paste, ping, keep flicking out a few around your float, and that's why you need to fish close in so that you can reach it. You could use ground bait. I think when you're using a subtle bait like this, um, you want to feed the same and make sure that there aren't other things in the water masking the, the subtle scent of this, because the fish do love it, believe me. Now I'm going to try, try and have to uh, prove that to you. 
nothing that first cast but uh, well nothing beyond the first couple of nibbles but we've just put some fresh paste on and uh, chucked out again and you do need to check if the bites dry up there's a fair chance that paste may have dissolved off into the water um, so yeah be patient but if you've not had any indications for a few minutes it's worth checking to see that paste is still there or not and in this case I did have to rebait there's one or two bubbles starting to show which is always a good sign on this pond remember I'm only flicking out odd little balls of paste there's not a lot of feed going in there at all there's a lot of scent coming off that paste and there you can just see the tip of the porcupine quill by the lily pad waiting to go under. Can't get much more traditional or uh, enjoyable than that. Another little indication there. Just waiting for something a little more definite because uh, you've obviously got to strike the hook through that paste even if it's a very small lump. I actually lack a jacuzzi out there at the moment. Just got a few spots of rain coming. We did have the potential for storms or thunder in the forecast, but look at those bubbles popping up. Got to be something more than roach out there, maybe a tench or one of the crusions that are in here. And there we've got our first fish on. Feels half decent as well. There's no small roach. That was my third cast, I think. Really nice feeling playing on a centre pin, very direct connection. With this light rod cushioning all the lunges, it's pulling quite steadily. No mad rush. We'll soon see what it is. Wow, we've got ourselves a tench. Only a baby, but not a bad first fish. Get the net out. Have a look at him. Hooked just in the lip. He may only be a baby, but he's a baby tench. And that's as nice a summer fish as you could hope to catch on my granddad's paste recipe. Not bad for a first, uh, first fish. Let's put him back. More hen trying to get the uh, feed there. Just constantly putting a little ball in. Well, I'm into another fish and this time it took it on the drop. Quite unusual when you pace fishing to get it on the drop, but I'll take anything. Only about 10 minutes into the session looks like possibly a roach or even a rod just about a netter i think this could be a rod now talk about traditional fishing with a traditional bait it's a lovely little rod bronze flanks bright red fins orange eye and he obviously likes the pace because he took it on the drop so let's get him back and uh, have another cast Slightly bigger piece of paste on this time, quite ragged. Lots of scent leaking off it, and a very noisy plane going over above. Well, that's sorry for you. And we're into a third fish. Half an hour, 45 minutes most in, and I think we've got a third species as well. Hardly a uh, fight of the century, but a little skimmer. Lovely slow bite. Just like the others, hook right in the lip. Really nice little skimmer. Three different fish, three species. And yes, could I have caught I don't know, 10, 20 fish if I was fishing with maggot and casters, no doubt. That's what I'd do if I was in a match on here. But um, sometimes, like in life, you just got to slow down. And same is true of fishing. The rain's uh, just picking up a bit more now. 
So I don't know how much longer I'll be able to stay. I've not got an umbrella with me. Um, but let's give it another cast. Now we're into a fourth. And this is a better tench. Put up quite the scrap, this one. Just got him under control now. There he is. Beautiful. Not a monster by any means, but a bit bigger than the first baby one. Nice scrap on light gear. And now we've got another skimmer. There we go, hook almost came out in the net. Nice little skimmer. Let's put him back. Really enjoyed it. Um, using a homemade bait has always got that special appeal. And uh, it's just nice to get out on the bank for an hour or two and catch a few fish take the pressure off you're not here to try and bag up or uh, try and put as many fish together as possible sometimes I love doing that but um, sometimes it's nice just to slow down well as you can see there's still loads of paste left and remember that was made just using two slices of bread and uh, a bit of flour and the other ingredients but there's loads left and that'll go back in the, the fridge or the freezer if I want to keep it longer term and uh, I'll get plenty more sessions out of this even though I've been feeding it steadily throughout. We're nearly out of time now but um, we knew it'd be a short session and what a great session it's been. I've uh, used an old-fashioned uh, bait if you want to call it that bread paste with my granddad's secret recipe link below for the video on how to make that and I've used his old porcupine float and center pin reel and caught fish like tench, rudd, a couple of skimmers no roach, surprisingly, there's plenty in here, but um, I've not been short of bites or action. And uh, again, it's just demonstrated you don't need to go out for, for long sessions with bags of bait to, to catch fish or to enjoy it. So yeah, I'll also put a link to the video below for the, for the one about uh, using the minimal of tackle and having your stuff ready to go so you can go at the drop of a hat. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please subscribe as always and uh, tell your friends. Share the video, give it a like, much appreciated. Tight lines until next time.